everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we're going to learn how to work the Clover Market Bag, which is a crochet pattern that I designed and it features a beautiful cluster stitch. Now this is an easy style market bag to work. It's worked as one piece starting down at the bottom. The finished bag measures approximately 16 by 14 inches when it's laid flat and that is excluding the handles that are up here. For the market bag today, I'm going to be using a little bit of worsted weight cotton. I'm using the Pima Cotton by Lion Brand. I'll be using the colors Dragonfly, which is my color A. Color B will be this uh, rose taupe color. And then color C is this vintage off-white color. So you're going to need some worsted weight cotton. Uh, in total, I'm using two balls of uh, the vintage color, one ball of the rose taupe, and then one ball of the dragonfly color. You're also going to need a five millimeter crochet hook, and there's links to both of these items in the description of the video. Also in the description, you will find a direct link to the free written pattern, which is on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com. If you're joining me for the marvelous market bag crochet along, this is the first pattern uh, available for that event. So thank you so much while you're here. I invite you to, to subscribe, uh, say hello down in the comments, and I look forward to seeing your finished market bags on social media. Now I neglected to say at the very beginning of the video, uh, also you're going to need several stitch markers. I recommend using four to five, and these will be to mark the handles later on in the bag. Uh, you can also use them to help mark your place, that, and I'll show you how to do that uh, as you're working the bottom of the bag as well. So uh, our pattern today is worked in rounds. We're going to start by making our slip knot and then by working a foundation chain of 41 stitches. Once you have chained 41 stitches, we're going to begin working around our foundation chain. So you're not going to join it. And you're going to begin by working one half double crochet into that first stitch and then each stitch all the way across to the, or sorry, into the second chain from your hook and then into each chain all the way across to your final one. Now I'm working in the back bumps of my stitches, but it's really up to you uh, as far as where you would like to work. You just want to work one half double crochet in that second chain and then into each chain all the way across until you have one stitch remaining. Once you've worked half double crochet stitches all the way across, you have one chain remaining. Into this chain, you're going to work three half double crochet stitches. This is going to bring you around. So now you have the bottom or underside of your foundation chain facing you. We're now going to continue working half double crochet stitches across uh, working in the opposite side of your foundation chain. So I've worked three into this final stitch, going into the next stitch. I'm just going to work half double crochet stitches once again in each chain all the way across. When you come to your final chain or that final stitch, you're going to work two half double crochet stitches into that final stitch. At the end of this round, you're going to have a total of 82 half double crochets. 
Now I'm here at the end of round one. I have one stitch remaining here into this final stitch. I'm going to work two half double crochet stitches and then join with a slip stitch into the top of that first stitch. We're then ready. Actually, I joined into the chain there. I'm going to switch to the top of the first stitch. We're then going to chain one. Do not turn your work. And we're going to begin round two. For round two, into this first stitch, work three half double crochet stitches. Now, if you would like, uh, you may mark the second half double crochet stitch of that set because each time you come around to the center stitch of the three, you're going to be working three stitches into the, each of these and this is going to form our corners. So into that second stitch, if you would like, you can mark it and you're going to come back to it later. You're then going to work one half double crochet into each of the next 38 stitches. So it's going to bring us around to our uh, next set of three stitches. One half double crochet in each of the next 38. Once you have worked 38 half double crochet stitches into your next stitch, you're going to work three half double crochet stitches. Again, if you would like, you can mark the middle stitch, so the second of the three, uh, which will be your corner stitch going forward. You're then going to work one half double crochet into the next stitch, and then three half double crochet stitches into the next. Again, I'm going to mark that second one of the three for my corner. You're then going to work one half double crochet into each of the next 38 stitches. Once you've uh, worked your 38 half double crochets along the other side, into your next stitch, work three half double crochet stitches. If you would like, you can mark that second stitch for the corner. Work one half double crochet into your next stitch and then join with a slip stitch into the top of the first stitch. That brings you to the end of your round two. For round three, we're going to have a uh, chain one, do not turn your work, half double crochet into that first stitch, the same stitch is joining, and then your next stitch should be your marked stitch. Into this stitch, you're going to work three half double crochet stitches. So I can remove, remove my marker, work three stitches, into that next stitch. And once again, replace the stitch marker if you'd like. You're then going to work one half double crochet into each of the next 40 stitches. And this should bring you along to your next stitch marker. Once you have worked 40 half double crochets, you're back at your next stitch marker. Into that stitch, work three half double crochet stitches. Replace your marker if you'd like. You're then going to work one half double crochet into each of the next three stitches. That brings you to your next stitch marker. Into this next stitch, work three half double crochets all into the same stitch. Mm -hmm. 
replace the stitch marker into the second of the three. You're then going to continue around the other side and work one half double crochet into each of the next 40 stitches. This should bring you to your next stitch marker. Once you've worked 40 half double crochets and you've reached that next stitch marker, into that next stitch work 3 half double crochet stitches. You're then going to work one half double crochet into each of the next two stitches and then join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. At the end of this round three you should have a total of 98 half double crochet stitches. For round four, do not turn your work, chain one half double crochet into the same stitch as joining and into the next stitch, so into the first two stitches. This brings you to your stitch marker, into that next stitch work three half double crochet stitches, You're then going to work one half double crochet into each of the next 42 stitches. This will bring you across to your next corner marker. Once you've worked 42 stitches and you've come to your next stitch marker, work three half double crochets into that next stitch. You're then going to work one half double crochet into each of the next five stitches. That will bring you to your next stitch marker. Into that next stitch, work three half double crochets. Next, working along the other side, work one half double crochet into each of the next 42 stitches. Once you've worked 42 stitches or an, and are at your next stitch marker, work three half double crochet stitches into that next stitch. You're then going to work one half double crochet in each of the remaining three stitches. And then join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. This brings you to the end of round four and at the end of round four you'll have a total of 106 stitches. For round five do not turn your work. Work one half double crochet in each of the next three stitches. Into your next stitch, work three half double crochet stitches. You're then going to work one half double crochet into each of the next 44 stitches across to your next stitch marker. Once you've worked 44 half double crochet stitches into your next stitch, work three half double crochets.
You're then going to work one half double crochet into each of the next seven stitches. That should bring you to your next corner stitch marker. Into that next stitch, work three half double crochets. You're now working along the opposite side again. You're going to work one half double crochet into each of the next 44 stitches. Once you've worked 44 half double crochet, you're going to work 3 half double crochet into your next stitch. And then 1 half double crochet into each of your final 4 stitches. Join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. That brings you to the end of round 5 and at the end of round 5 you should have a total of 114 stitches. Now for round 6, 7 and 8, so for the next 3 rounds, you're simply going to work one half double crochet into each stitch all the way around, join with a slip stitch into the first stitch, chain one, and work a half double crochet in each stitch all the way around. So I'm going to leave you to work those three rounds, and then at the end of those three rounds, so at the end of round eight, meet me back here. So work chain one, one half double crochet in each stitch, all the way around, join with a slip stitch into that first stitch and meet me back here at the end of round eight. At the end of round eight, so I've now worked three rounds of half double crochet stitches. This is what the bottom of the bag looks like. And it's folded here. I'm just at my final stitch. At the end of round eight, you will be fastening off your color A and switching to your color B. So there are a number of ways you can do that. Uh, one of the ways I like to switch colors is I'm here at my final stitch for my half double crochet stitch. I'm going to begin that stitch working in the color A, yarn over, insert my hook into that next stitch, yarn over and drop a loop. Then I'm just simply going to drop my color A, pick up my color B, which is this rose taupe, place it on my hook, pull through and then join with a slip stitch using the new color into that first stitch. I'm then all set and ready to go with my color B in this first stitch. You can then just take a pair of scissors and fasten off and as I work my next round I'm going to work over top of it just simply to weave it in a little bit. So, uh, once you've joined your new color, you're going to continue working in the same direction. You're going to begin by chaining one. So this is the first round of your side, or the bag body. With color B, chain one and single crochet into that first stitch. And that's your same stitch as joining. You're then going to chain one. Whoops. I'm using the tail of my yarn. <laughs> Let me go back here just a sec. There we go. So single crochet, chain one, skip the next stitch, and single crochet into the next stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way around. Chain one, skip the next stitch, single crochet into the next. Repeat it all the way around uh, until you have one stitch remaining.
At the end of the first round of your bag sides, you're going to have one stitch remaining, chain one, and then you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of the first stitch. Now at this time, I want to switch to my color C. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert my hook into the top of that stitch. I'm simply going to drop my color B, pick up the color C, place it on my hook, and pull it through both loops for the slip stitch join. Pull any strands tighter. At this time, I'm going to leave my color B attached. Leave that pinky color attached. I'm going to carry it up the inside of my bag so that I don't have to weave in ends after each round. And I'll show you as we work how I'm doing that. Once you've joined your new color, you've joined with a slip stitch, you're going to slip stitch into the first chain one space. So just into that first chain one space. We're now going to begin with uh, round two of our bag sides with a chain two. We're going to work a beginning cluster. So chain two. Then to finish the beginning cluster, you're going to yarn over, insert your hook into that same chain one space, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. Repeat that one more time, yarn over, insert your hook into the same chain one space, yarn over and drop a loop, yarn over and pull through two loops, then yarn, yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. That's your beginning cluster. You're then going to chain one, skip the next stitch, the single crochet, and work a cluster in your next chain one space. To work the full cluster, yarn over, insert your hook into that chain one space, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through two loops. Repeat that two more times, yarn over, insert your hook into the same chain one space, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. One more time, into the same chain one space. Once you have four loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all four. Chain one, skip the next single crochet and work a cluster into the next stitch. You're going to repeat this all the way around. Chain one, skip the next single crochet, cluster in the next same uh, chain one space until you come back around to your final uh, chain one space and single crochet. Once you come all the way around, you'll have worked one final cluster stitch in your final chain one. You're then going to chain one and join with a slip stitch into the top of this cluster stitch, switching back to your color B. So your color B should be just down here, still attached to the back. So you're just going to pick it up and very gently place it back on your hook and pull through. Don't pull it too, too tight because you don't want to cause this row to bunch and it's just going to be carried up there on the inside. You're then going to, as you did before, for round three, now using your color B, slip stitch into the chain one space, chain one. You're then going to single crochet into that first chain one space, chain one, skip the next cluster and single crochet into the next chain one space. Chain one, skip the next cluster, single crochet into the next chain one space. You're going to repeat that all the way around until you come to your final cluster stitch. At the end of round three of your bag sides, you've worked a single crochet in your final chain one space, 
chain one, skip that final cluster stitch, and join with a slip stitch in the first stitch. But once again, after, when we join, we're going to drop our color B, pick up that color C, place it on our hook, and pull through for the join. That way, you're all set to go with your color C slip stitch into that chain one space, and then work your beginning cluster. For the, uh, until round 27, so rounds four through to 27, you're going to simply repeat your rows two, which was this cluster stitch round, and your round three, which was the final single crochet chain one uh, round that we just worked. So in total, you're going to have worked 13 rounds of your cluster stitch rounds. It makes it really easy to count. So you're going to work through to round 27. You're going to end with a round three, which is your single crochet round. And then the body of your bag will be complete. You're going to meet me back here at the end of your round 27. So go ahead, work the body of your bag. Simply repeat rounds two and three until you have a total of 13 cluster stitch rounds and with your round three and then meet me back here. At the end of round 27, this is what your work will look like. Pull back a little bit here. Uh, you have your bottom of your bag. You're going to have 13 rounds of cluster stitches with your single crochet chain one rounds in between. You're going to finish off with that single crochet chain one round. Get my camera fixed here again. There we go. And in your final stitch, you're chaining one, you're going to join with a slip stitch, but uh, you're going to switch back to your color A in this final stitch. So switch back to your color A, and you're now ready to work the bag handles and the top of your bag. So we're going to start off by working a few rounds of half double crochet stitches. So for the top and handles for this first round, using your color A, chain one, continue working in the same direction. You're going to half double crochet into that same stitch as joining. And then half double crochet into each chain space and each stitch all the way around the top of your bag. So into the chain one space, into the single crochet, chain one space, all the way around. When you come back to your first stitch, join with a slip stitch into your first stitch. Once you've worked three more rounds of half double crochet stitches around the top of your bag, you come to your first stitch, join with a slip stitch in that first stitch, and you can then fasten off. Go ahead and weave in any ends if you would like at this time. You're then ready to begin your handles, and we're going to work them in a continuous way around the top of our bag. Now, what we're going to do now is first mark 
where our handles are going to join. To do that, you want to lay your bag flat on your surface. I'm going to try and pull my camera back here just a little bit. so You can see a little bit more of the view. And once you lay it flat, this is my bottom down here, the top is up here, take a stitch marker and simply in the corner mark that very corner stitch. You're then across the front of your bag, you're going to count 57 stitches, not including that stitch. So just count across. There's 40, 50, 57. When you come to your 57th stitch, you should be around the side of the bag and mark that stitch. So these are your two corner stitches. We're going to have one stitch marked on each side. Now from the stitch markers on the front of our bag, so I still have the front facing, on the front of your bag you're going to count in nine stitches and mark that stitch. So not including our stitch marker, we're going to count in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Mark this stitch and do the same thing on the other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine. And what we're doing is we're just making sure that our handles are going to be centered on our bag. Okay, so you have nine marked on the back side of your bag. So you can turn your bag over. From that side stitch marker, you're going to count in ten stitches and mark that stitch. There's ten. And on the other side, starting at your side stitch marker, count in 10. When you uh, now look at your bag, you should have 40 stitches in between the stitch markers on the front and on the back. You can remove your two side stitch markers, but leave the ones that are on the front and the back of the bag attached. You're then going to, once again, take your color A, and on the front or the back of your bag, it doesn't really matter, but all the sides are the same, you're going to join in the stitch marker I'm joining on the left hand side because I'm working right to left. So you're simply going to join with a slip stitch into that marked stitch. And I'm joining with my color A. Once you've joined, chain one. We're now ready to continue working the handles of our bag. You're going to begin by working a half double crochet in each stitch beginning at that stitch marker on the left hand side in each stitch all the way around to the next stitch marker. So simply half double crochet in each stitch until you come to the next stitch marker on the other side and you'll remember you have removed your two side stitch markers. So you only have the four, two on the front and two on the back. So half double crochet across to that next marker.
and half double crochet into that marked stitch. And then you can remove that one as well if you'd like. You're then going to chain 50. You'll want to make these chains fairly loose. There's 10. Twenty five, forty, and fifty. Once you've chained fifty, turning your bag so that the either the front or the back is now facing you. You're going to skip those 40 stitches in between the two stitch markers and half double crochet into the next stitch that you've marked. So simply half double crochet into that marked stitch. You can then remove your stitch marker. You're now going to half double crochet into each stitch along the side until you come to your first stitch. Or sorry, until you come to your next stitch marker. That long chain 50 is going to form the opening uh, for your bag handles. Now I should also say if you would like shorter bag handles, you can adjust the size of that uh, long chain 50. You can make it shorter or longer depending on your preference. Just make sure that if you do change the size, that when you come to the other side of your bag here, you make the foundation chain uh, the same length. So you're going to half double crochet into that next marked stitch, remove the stitch marker, chain 50 once again or chain whatever uh, length you would like. There's 10, 20, Thirty, forty, and fifty. Skip the next forty stitches all the way back across to your first stitch, and now you're going to join with a slip stitch into that first stitch. Chain one, do not turn your work. For round six of our handles, we're now going to half double crochet into each stitch and each chain stitch. So into each half double crochet and each chain stitch all the way around. When you come back to your first stitch, you're going to join with a slip stitch into that first stitch. I'm just going to work around to my first handle so that you can see what it's going to look like. I'm half double crocheting on each stitch around to that long chain 50. When you come to your chain, you're going to work into the chain all the way across 
and then continue working into your half double crochet stitches. Now hopefully you worked your chain fairly loose. I'm having trouble just working into this first stitch, but you're just going to work all the way across. If you want, you can work into the chain space. Uh, it's really up to you, but you're just going to work along each chain and then continue working around the top of your bag until your first stitch and then join. Once you come all the way around at the end of round six, join with a slip stitch into your first stitch. Do not turn your work. You should have two handles now at the top of your bag. You're then going to chain one and now for the final three rounds, round seven, eight, and nine, you're going to half double crochet into that first stitch and then into each stitch all the way around. Join with the slip stitch in the first stitch. Do not turn your work, chain one, and work another round of half double crochet. So in total, you want three rounds of half double crochet, round seven, eight, and nine. At the end of those rounds, you can fasten off, weave in your ends, and your clover market bag is then complete. So thank you so much for joining me on this tutorial on how to make the Clover Market Bag. Enjoy your crochet bags and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Until then, happy crocheting. Bye. Mm -hmm.